Hey guys, I'm so excited to be with you for another week of the gospel according to TikTok. This week, we're gonna be talking about duets. So there are these things on TikTok called duets. And what they do is it allows you to either mimic a video that someone else has made or it allows you to go side by side in a video. And sometimes it's dance challenges, sometimes it's uh, like reaction videos, there's all kinds of different things. And it always makes me think of this passage in scripture in Ephesians 5 verses 1 and 2. And this is the passion translation that I'll be reading from. So it might be a little bit um, of a different translation than what you're reading today. But let's read starting in verse 1. Be imitators of God in everything you do. For when you do, you represent your father as his beloved sons and daughters and continue to walk surrendered to the extravagant love of Christ. For he surrendered his life as a sacrifice for us. His great love for us was pleasing to God like an aroma of adoration, a sweet healing fragrance. The Apostle Paul is writing this letter and he's writing... Um, writing it very passionately. He gives a clear instruction for us to be imitators of Christ. That's probably what your translation says at your, with your Bible at home, is be ye imitators of Christ. And this is actually what he's talking about. See, when I'm on TikTok, I see lots of people making duets and dance, dance challenges, and it reminds me to be an imitator of Christ. And I hope that after today, when you see duets or any sort of um, video like that, I hope it, it, it strikes in your mind that we should be uh, imitators of Christ. What's interesting is that we become when we become imitators of Christ, the Bible says that we represent our father as his sons and daughters. This is really important because when what you need to understand is sometimes when you get in trouble at school or sometimes when you get in trouble um, out if you're with your friends and your parents will say, you're not just representing yourself, you're representing us, you're representing our family. And this is especially true and something that we need to keep in mind as believers. See, when we are a believer and people know we're a believer, when people know that we're a Christian, you're not just representing yourself, you're also representing Christ. And so sometimes when people can see that, it's, if someone is very unfriendly, or mean or cross with someone else, um, other people will see that who are not believers and they will see it and think, wow, <laughs> is this what all believers are like? Is this what it's like to be a believer? And we have to kind of cut it off right there and say, no, we're supposed to be imitators of God and represent our Father in heaven. This is a serious opportunity that we have to share with others, not just the love of Christ, but also what it looks like when the love of Christ is expressed through his followers. So we don't get to just show his love, but we get to express his love through him. So there's these two thoughts. And the first one is the thing I just said, show the love. We have to be people that show the love. In John 13, 35, it says this, by this, everyone will know that you are my disciples if you love one another. This is actually Jesus speaking. He's talking to the disciples and he's saying, listen, don't don't quarrel with each other. Don't fight. Don't be, don't be at each other's throats. You, the people will know that you're followers of me if you love one another. And Jesus is speaking to his disciples in this passage in John, and he's explaining them that the lifeblood of his movement is love. What's pushing this movement forward is love. Remember last week we talked about what's often to referred to as the golden rule, remember? Well, it's important to know that this week is actually how Jesus said people will be able to tell that we are his disciples. Remember, he said there was a golden rule. Do you guys remember what that was from last week when we in week two of the gospel according to TikTok? We talked about how Jesus said, love God and love others. It was as simple as that. Well, now he's saying, okay, this is what others loving others looks like. This is what it actually looks like when love is expressed. It's selfless. It's, it, it cares about others. It's kind. And this is the kind of love that we are to show one another as believers. The one thing that should be most evident in all of our lives is love. That's the one thing that, that should shine through everything else. It should be very evident that we are people of love. The takeaway that people get from us is that we are loving people. That's, that's one thing that people should be able to recognize when they have an encounter with you, when they play ball with you, when, you, when you're, say you're in sports, if you're on the field against another team, we're getting ready to have this quarantine be over. So hopefully we can get back into some sports. Listen, I don't want, I don't want for you, for anyone to walk off the field and think that person, that person was a believer. I can't believe that person is a Christian. They're so mean. They're so, their words weren't clothed in, in, in love. And, and we as humans kind of get this wrong sometimes. And we can fail because we are human. But this is the lifeblood of the movement of Jesus Christ is that we are full of love.
See, when you're, you're making a TikTok dance video, you practice again and again and again until you get it right. Because no one posts their failed TikTok dances. They always let you know in the comments, this took forever. Well, why did it take forever? Because getting it right takes some time. We did a, a TikTok contest in December. Some of you guys remember that. And I saw you guys in the hallways, in the lobby, right here in the student center, practicing and making sure that you were doing your best to, to get it right. And it's because those things take time. And it's really important that you understand that, that these things take time. This is actually how it works when you're showing love. We try again and again and again to get it right. You won't always be loving at first at the, at, at, at when you first start to, to live a lifestyle of love. You'll get it wrong sometimes. You'll mess up. You'll say the wrong thing. I do that still. But if you commit to showing love to everyone around you, it will pay off. When someone works hard on TikTok, they end up on the For You page and everyone can see it. And, and we, when we show up in our lives, when we start to live a life of excellent love, Jesus will give us a platform to show his love and it will be on display for others. Not so that we can get applause or credit, but so that we can represent our father. Once we've shown love, then we have to learn to share it. So this is number two. We have to share the love. Jesus was among many things on earth, but one thing he was on was on a mission, right? In Matthew 10, 24, he says this, and if anyone gives a cup of cold water to one of these little ones who is my disciple, truly I tell you, that person will certainly not lose their reward. Another translation says, when you do it to the least of these, then you've done it unto me. This is what it's important to remember at this point is that when we do things in love, we're representing our father, but also it can't just be you know, shining love or expressing it or just even speaking it from your mouth. You have to actually do things that are loving. It's more than just words. It's more than just lip service. It's actually actions that contribute to a lifestyle of love. Jesus empowered us not only to show love, but to share it as well. Especially right now, as we're coming out of this quarantine, it's important to share Christ's love with others. There are some people who are hopeless. There are some people who have lost a ton of stuff during during this quarantine or during the shutdown. And it's important that we know as believers that it's our responsibility to show the love of Christ to those people and to, to not just show them, but just share with them and just wrap them in our arms, not expecting anything in return, just wanting to love on people. That's what Jesus did, right? This may be something as simple as helping a neighbor who's maybe gotten a little behind, or this could be something as serious as someone's, one of your friends has lost someone during this quarantine, and most likely they weren't able, able to have an actual funeral. It may be carrying that friend through a time of recovery, or maybe they've, they've really had a tough time while they were inside um, quarantined at their house. Maybe they've really had a tough time and they just need some time for somebody to love on them. Well, that's our responsibility as believers. That's our, our job as believers to really show them the love of Jesus. It's really, really important that we can, can take hold of this. And what's interesting to me is that when we do, when you do a duet on TikTok, usually what happens is, is sometimes you'll do a reaction, but most of the time what you're doing is passing along a trend. And what's really cool to me is there's a, there's a dance trend right now on, on, uh, on uh, TikTok. And my wife and I were trying to learn the dance. Uh, and this is the music for it. If you're on TikTok, you've, you've heard it. And uh, we were trying to get it right and, and make it for the end of today's video, but we just couldn't make it happen. And what's funny is that there are so many people that have done this dance challenge. I'm dance um, impaired, so I, I can't dance very well. But there's so many people that have passed along this dance challenge or maybe some of the other ones. Maybe it's this one. So you hear that? You know what I'm talking about. You've seen that dance challenge. What's cool about it is to think about it this way. When you share the love of Jesus with someone, it gets passed along. And then you start to see it everywhere. You have no idea what the love that you show could, could go on and become in someone else's life. See, when we show love to someone, when we express and share God's love, when we share the love of Jesus, it's going to go on and it's going to get passed on and it's going to get passed on. See, when someone initially did these dances, I don't know that they anticipated so many people all over the world doing them. And yet, it's affected so many people from all over the world. When we share the love of Jesus, it goes on, it gets passed on. 
and it becomes viral and it becomes something that people have got to share. Now, it may not be a dance challenge, but you can certainly share the love of Jesus. If you want to share dance challenges, that's cool too. But what's always most important is sharing the love of Jesus. So whenever you see a duet on TikTok, I hope that you remember to share the love of Jesus and be imitators of Christ, not just in your words, but in your actions, in your speech, in everything. Um, I hope that you can learn to be an imitator of Christ. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, I just pray that as we um, continue in this series, Lord, I just pray that you would check our hearts to make sure that we are being imitators of Christ, that we are representing you in the best way possible. And Lord, I just pray that as we continue uh, to come out of this, this quarantine and as we continue with our lives as normal, Lord, I just pray that one thing that we wouldn't lose sight of is showing love to others and being there for other people in their time of need. And Lord, I just pray that in our hearts, you would search for the areas that maybe we need improvement on so that we can sh continue to show love and that we can grow in our love for others. Maybe we don't have very much love in our hearts. Lord, that's something that you can help us with. That's something that you can train us to have. And so, Lord, I just pray that you would help us by your Holy Spirit, train us to have the kind of love that it takes to truly make a difference in our community, in our family, in our school, in all of, uh, and, and everywhere that we go. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Guys, I want to end with this. Um, in February, the Lord began to work on Pastor Megan and I's hearts. Um, and we uh, went and talked to our pastors um, and kind of shared what we were what we were thinking the Holy Spirit was speaking to us. After a time of prayer, the Holy Spirit really began to to um, reveal to us that we believed that our chapter here at Plainview First Youth and Plainview First Assembly was over. We did not anticipate that COVID-19 would be a global outbreak and we would not be able to spend these last two months with you. So when you get back, Megan and I won't be here. We will no longer be your youth pastors. This is what I wanted to say to you. We really didn't want to tell you this way, and it's the reason why we waited this long to say anything at all. Pastor um, met with us this week, and we kind of decided that it was time to go ahead and tell our church and you guys. Here's what I can say. I'm so sorry. We had to tell you guys through technology, through through social media. That's not how we wanted to tell you, and we certainly wanted to be around to spend time with you, to love on you, to give you hugs, to, to be around you guys, um, and to spend this last couple months with you. And we certainly wanted a chance to be able to physically say goodbye. Unfortunately, we will still be um, not allowed to meet by the time that we are leaving. We're leaving on May 31st. And so we won't get another chance. Here's what I can say about that, is that Megan and I will be here on a Sunday um, to say goodbye when all of the quarantine is over and we'll be able to say goodbye to everybody and give you a hug. So I hope that as soon as church opens again, which is gonna be here pretty soon, that you're able to be here on that Sunday. We will announce that we'll let everybody know so that we can give you a hug and tell you that we love you. The other thing I wanted to say is this, we've loved being your youth pastors. We've been here four years. So some of you guys grew up with us and I, I, I honestly could call you out by name. Some of you guys that are coming to mind and I, we love you. We believe that God's best is in store for you and we will miss you like crazy. Please continue to keep up with us on social media. We're not disappearing off the face of the earth. So we wanna hear from you. We wanna see um, everything that's going on in your life and we wanna see how the Lord is using in your daily life. Um, I know this, that uh, pastor is gonna make an announcement to you guys soon and he's so excited we are so excited to see where Plainview First Youth goes in the future we know that God's best is in store and we know um, that God is really going to do something incredible here at Plainview First Youth so so keep coming as soon as the quarantine is over we want to see you here um, your, your youth staff is energized they're excited to see you we cannot wait for you guys to be back on on campus um, we love you guys. Megan and, and Callum aren't able to be here today, but for, on behalf of my family, thank you for letting us be your youth pastors. We love you guys um, more than you could ever know. We have really, really enjoyed being your youth pastors. We love you. Um, and again, we are so sorry that we're not able to, to physically be together, um, but the next best thing is to just hopefully try and come on camera and express how much we love you guys and how much we're going to miss you, and especially how much you have meant to us over the past four years. We love you, and we are praying God's best for you. Again, we'll be back on a Sunday so that we can say goodbye, but I wanted to go ahead and make the announcement here because your parents have already learned about it. We love you guys. We love you, we love you, we love you. Have a great week.